If there are any persons in the foyer, ask them to please come in and be seated. You may be seated. To our esteemed president, Dr. Leroy Staggers, our guest speaker for this morning's occasion, Bishop Jonathan Holston, our college minister, Reverend Dr. Charles P., our director of the Morris College Gospel Choir and Chorale, Mr. Herbert Johnson, our Student Government Association president, Ms. Danasia Nathan, all administrators, faculty, staff, students, and guests. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It is indeed a good and blessed morning. Count it a blessing to see each of you here this morning for this very special occasion, and we welcome you to the Fall President's Lecture Series. For those of you who may not be aware, the President's Lecture Series is a special time that the President sets aside to welcome a seasoned professional from a select career field to come to the campus and share insight and wisdom regarding some of their personal and professional experiences in an effort to inspire, encourage, and motivate you, our students, to always strive to reach your goals in life. Those are your personal and professional goals. And students, you can reach your goals in life, but as I always say, reaching your goals in life always begin with setting goals. And we need you all to get serious if you aren't about setting goals. If there's something that you have in mind, a desired purpose, then you need to set goals so that you can achieve your goals because nothing can stop you from achieving your goals outside of you. I've always said, if you are not sure about how to set goals, short term and long term, we are here to help you. We want you to be successful, okay? But you've got to set goals if you want to be successful. All right, now having said that, let us give these others a few minutes to come in and get seated. Okay, we're going to ask the audience to please stand and sing with uplifted voices our opening hymn, Lift Him Up, which will be led by Mr. Herbert Johnson, the director of the Morris College Chorale and Gospel Choir. Lift Him Up. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer Jesus gave the key, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw men unto me, lift him up, lift him up. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw men unto me. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up till he speaks for me. Don't exalt the preacher. 
preacher. Don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel, simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you will find that promise is true. I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Lift him up by living as a Christian heart. Let the world in you the Savior see. Then men will gladly follow him who once taught how draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up, till he speaks for me turn. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw men unto me. Oh, lift him up, the Savior up, lift him up, till he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Herbert Johnson. You may be seated. And now the Reverend Dr. Charles P., our college minister and assistant professor in the Division of Religion, Humanities, and Social Sciences, will come with this morning's scripture and prayer, followed by the announcements by Ms. Denasia Nathan, president of the Student Government Association. Our scripture for this morning, Psalm 103 verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The word of God for the people of God. Praises be unto God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for blessings, opportunities, and challenges. Equip us to face the future with courage, confidence, and commitment. In these days of political uncertainty, religious turmoil, and economic difficulty lead us to live with meaning, purpose, and dignity. Enable every student to study, to learn, and to achieve. Today, O oh God, inspire the leadership of President Staggers and keep him in your love and care. Bless the entire Morris College family, the dedication and loyalty. And today, O oh God, give unto Bishop host and words of wisdom, empowerment, and guidance. In the name of our Lord, we humbly pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. These are the announcements Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Attention Morris College family. All students interested in competing for the titles of Miss Homecoming, Mr. or Miss Coed may come pick up solicitation letters in the Office of Student Affairs. <coughs> the deadline for reporting funds for competition 
is Friday, November 8, 2019. Winners will be declared during the pre-fall harvest rally assembly on Tuesday, November 12, 2019. Attention students, the, Div the Division of Business Administration would like to meet with you all, business majors, for a mandatory, <clears throat> again, this is a mandatory meeting immediately after the assembly in the Neil Jones Auditorium. Attention Morris College family, traveling abroad can be the most exciting and enriching experience of your college career. Morris College is offering the opportunity to visit Berlin, Germany during spring break. If you are interested, contact Dr. Patricia Ali, HHB room 132 at an email p at morris.edu or extension 3250. Students may complete financial arrangements to enroll this and enroll this semester. Attention students, Student Support Services wants you to take full advantage of all the support and services we have to offer. Need help studying, managing your time, taking tests, writing papers, and working math problems? We can help. We offer weekly counselor, English, math, and math workshops, one-on-one -on -one supplement instructions in English and math, one-on-one -on -one peer tutoring, and the Learn and Earn program. <coughs> You can increase your knowledge and earn extra credit by participating in the Learn and Earn program. These are just a few services we offer that can help to improve your grades. Stop by today. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Brawley Starks Academic Success Center on the second floor, room 214. Attention students from the Office of Financial Aid. All students who have not received a financial aid award for the fall 2019 need to report to the financial aid office to submit missing documents or to determine what documents are needed. There are more than 20 students with work study awards who have not received a job assignment. Students should check the rosters in their residence halls to see if their name is listed. Attention all new freshmen and transfer students. If you have not completed your federal direct loan master promissory note or interest counseling online, please do so immediately. We cannot request your student loan funds until you have completed both of these. Please come by the financial aid office to pick up an instruction sheet if you need help. UNCF scholarships are available for all students to apply. Students are encouraged to register for UNCF scholarships at www.scholarships.uncf.org. You must complete the student profile and general scholarship application. The 2020-2021 FAFSA is now available for completion. All students who will be returning to college in fall 2020 need to complete the 2020-2021 FAFSA. Students needing assistance may come to the financial aid office. Attention students, do you want to improve your life? Have you ever wondered what's your purpose? Are you interested in being a part of an organization that feels like family? If you answer yes to any of these questions, join the Baptist Student Union, BSU, for study, Bible study every Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the O.R. Rubin Chapel Sanctuary. The world is waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. P. and Ms. Nathan. At this time, Elder J. Elbert Williams, a 2004 graduate who majored in pastoral ministry and now pastors three churches in Marion, South Carolina, to include Bethel United Methodist Church, Springville United Methodist Church, and Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church, will now come to present this morning's speaker. Let us welcome Elder Williams. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning, sinners. Good morning. <laughs> we got a little work to do here at Morris College. The same folk that spoke to me the first time ought to be speaking to me the second time. It's a great honor and a privilege today to stand before you this morning and introduce the summit to present to others. Bishop Jonathan L. Hoston, the resident bishop of the South Carolina Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. He's married to Miss Felicia Brown Holston, who's with us this morning. God bless you. Thank you, First Lady. They have two adult children, Carlton Maurice and Brittany Jean. He was elected to the Episcopacy and consecrated in July of 2012. Bishop Holston holds his Master's of Divinity in Biblical Studies from the Interdenominational Theological Center, Gammon Theological Seminary, 
Atlanta, Georgia. He also holds a bachelor's degree in religion from the University of Georgia. Prior to his appointment at the St. James United Methodist Church, he served as the superintendent of the Atlanta Decatur Oxford District, 1997 to 2005, and associate director of the North Georgia Conference Council of Ministries, 1992 to 1997. The senior pastor of the Clifton United Methodist Church from 1986 to 1992 the senior pastor of the Marietta Street United Methodist Church, 1983-1986. In May of 2015, Bishop Holston received an honorary doctorate of divinity degree from Lutheran Theological Seminary here in uh, Lenora Ryan University. In May of 2016, he received the honorary doctorate of divinity degree from Gammon Theological Seminary and an honorary doctorate of Humane Letters from Hood Theological Seminary, Salisbury, North Carolina. He has traveled extensively as a specialist in missions, Ecuador, Uganda, Costa Rica, Haiti, Honduras, Zimbabwe, Kenya, India, China, Hong Kong. He's also served on the United Methodist Committee on Relief, the Catastrophe Deserve Disaster Relief Team as the Church World Service Di Disaster Consultant for the State of Georgia. Bishop Holston serves on the Executive Council of the Council of Bishops as the Chairperson of Missions Engagement and a Liaison to the Pan-Methodist Bishops. Bishop Holston currently serves as the Chairperson of the Gammon Theological Seminary Board of Trustees, as well as the Coordinator of Committees of Strengthening the Black Church for the 21st Century. Ladies and gentlemen, Mars College, my alma mater, city of Sumter, my hometown, hear ye him, Bishop Jonathan Holston. Good morning. Uh, on, as I stand before you this, this day, I'm grateful for President Staggers. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you our Dean of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Davis Freeman, thank you for this opportunity to be here as well. And for one of my pastors here in South Carolina, Reverend Albert Williams, thank you for this opportunity and invitation to our campus minister. Thank you so very much for the ability to be here as well, to the Board of Trustees for Morris College, to faculty, students, friends, and visitors here in this place who are grateful for this opportunity to stand with you. I thank you for this invitation. And on behalf of over 250,000 persons who are part of the United Methodist Church here in South Carolina, over 1,000 plus congregations, and 960 plus clergy persons, whom many I see here uh, on the campus today, I bring you greetings on behalf of the United Methodist Church in South Carolina. It's important for you to know that I am only the second African American bishop to serve in this annual conference. And so I, I count it a privilege to be before you today as we are God's people in God's place. The theme they've given me this time to share with you is when preparation meets purpose, challenges become opportunities. And I just want to share with you that when that theme happens, then you have to understand that failure is not an option. And as you sit on in these seats today and as you matriculate at this place called Morris College, I want you to know that you have to understand that failure is never an option. This is an opportunity for you to broaden your perspective, to begin to look within yourself, to do an introspection of who you are, and then to begin to dream dreams larger than yourself, to begin to see yourself in places that you never thought that you would go, to be in places that you never thought you would be. I just heard an announcement of you having a class that's going to Berlin. This is the 75th anniversary of the Western powers meeting in Berlin, Germany to divide up the continent of Africa, to pillage all of their resources, and to change the language of a continent of people to begin to put it on a subjection of westernized powers. 
And for those years, for those particular countries on the particular continent of Africa to fight for their freedom, to return their language to themselves, and to have self-determination and self-encouragement amongst themselves. You are living in a world where you can make a difference. And so I simply want to say to you today that as you matriculate and listen to your professors, you need to have within your own spirit that failure cannot and will not be an option. You've got to decide upon yourself where you make a difference in the world in which you're living and the world that will come after you. So I stand simply here to, today just to say to you that I live in a world in which you will give leadership in the days and months and years to come. I live in a world where you, we will depend upon your shoulders to get to the wheel to make decisions that will make my life better and the lives of others better. You are the people that we are dependent upon. You are the persons that we are seeking to have the knowledge that will make the difference. I want to say to you simply today, failure is simply not an option. I cannot, I cannot have you to be a failure in life. I'm depending upon you. I need for you to get as much knowledge as you can. And I need for you to get as much learning that you can. I need for you to get as much training that you can that when you step out into this world in which you live that you will give the direction to those of us who need to be able to depend upon you. Simply, my friends, students, faculty, administrators, failure cannot be our option. Being a clergy person, I... I have to use scripture to stand upon. So I'll choose a scripture for the day. For the 30 minutes that I've been given, I just want to simply say these words. From Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, it says these words. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there to a boat to a deserted place by himself. And when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot there. And then he went ashore and saw that there was a great crowd. He had compassion for them and cured their sick. And when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. And these are my words. Because failure is not an option. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, my words, failure is not an option. Bring what you have to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, gave them back to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. And the story is then told that when they took up the baskets, they had 12 baskets full of leftovers. Because of my words, failure is not an option. And this is a word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a story that's told that was in 1970, a man by the name of George Zimmer graduated from a school in St. Louis, Missouri, called Washington University. He had a degree in economics, and so when he graduated, he wanted to be in business. So three years later, he finds himself in Houston, Texas. Two of his college classmates with him, they decided to start a clothing business, and they were searching for a name for this clothing business, and so they decided to call it Men's Warehouse. Has anybody heard that yes, term? So as they began to start this business, it was not successful whatsoever. And so what they began to do is they knew that there was this new venue called television. And so they decided to do a commercial. So they prepared to film this commercial, and he wanted to let people know how they would be dressed when they left his establishment. The words that he was going to use was that at the end of the commercial, he was going to say, that's the fact, Jack. Now, that came out of a movie. That was a line out of a movie that he was going to use. But 
when he got before the cameras, I don't know if you've ever been before a television camera before or anyone, any kind of uh, recording of anything, sometimes what you want to say is not what you say. So you have to watch how you say things. But when he was before the cameras, he completely forgot his line. And this is the line that he said. You are going to like how you look. I guarantee it. Has anybody ever heard that line before? That line took his business from being a no nondescript business to being a billion dollar business. All because he was not afraid to tell people how he felt and what he felt. So my friends, this is what I want to share with you today. Four things about leadership. Leadership is a decision and you have to make it. Leadership is an obligation and you have to step up. Leadership is hard work and you got to get tough. Not mean-spirited, but you got to get tough. And leadership is community and you have to connect. So what is it about leadership? Leadership is a decision. You have to make it. If you use that scripture, what happened was that Jesus was at a place in which people were there. And they heard and they listened and they, they interpreted what he had to say. And then the disciples came to him and said, listen, we don't have enough money to feed all of these people. So you just send them home so they can buy food for themselves. And Jesus simply said in my vernacular, Failure is not an option. You've got to make a decision. You've got to make a choice. You've got to decide what are you going to do with the time that you have. You've got to decide what are you going to do with the, the things that you have. You may not have everything you want or need, but you've got to use what you have. Leadership is making a decision. You've got to make it. What happened was that Jesus asked, for them to bring them simply what they have. And they brought what they had, five loaves and two fish. What do you have here today? You have an opportunity that is sitting right before you. You have an opportunity to make a difference in your own life because of what you are learning, you have to use that for the world in which you're going to go. I take trips all around the world. I remember the first trip that I took in 1992 to the country of Zimbabwe. I had an opportunity to visit a, a school that the United Methodist Church had started, had started then in its infancy called Africa University. It was located in Matari, Zimbabwe, land that was given from an old missionary site. And to this very day, Africa University is still existing being built, and I want you to know, debt-free, President Staggers, debt-free, every building. They thought that they would never be able to graduate a student, and over 6,000 students plus have graduated from that institution. Where are those students now? Those students are leading their countries to where they were, where they matriculated from. Those students came to that university took what they had. Many of them did not only have the only the clothes on their back, but took the knowledge that they had received and they went back into their countryside and they began to offer leadership to those around them. My friends, leadership is a decision and you have to make it. You have to make it. I thought I could never travel around the world. I, and you've heard all the places that I have been. That I did not go because I wanted to go. I go because I needed to go. I needed to broaden my perspective. I needed to see things different. When you go away from where you are, you have an opportunity to see things differently. If you want to know about what migration and immigration is about, go to Honduras and go to Guatemala. Go to those places when you know that when people put their children on the back of a truck, and send them across the border to a place they don't know. They're doing it because they don't want their children to have the same problems that they're having in their country. And they're thinking that they may get to a place that where they can grow and be the people that they need to be. You can't just listen to the news and get all your information. Sometimes you got to pick up and go. 
Leadership is a decision. You have to make it. For those of you who are thinking, I can't go to Berlin, you need to go. The vo- those of you who think you don't need to go to the, the, country, the continent of Africa, you need to go. Those of you who have never been to a Central American country, you need to go. Those of you who have never been to Europe, you need to go. Why? Because they need to see you. Yes, sir. They want to see you you. They desire to be in conversation with you. I was talking to President Staggers. We want to try to make a connection with Africa University. Every time I go, and I'll be going to, in January, my wife and I will be leading a group of people from South Carolina. And we've been going every other year in South Carolina for the last eight years. Every time we go, they ask this question. Why can't the African-American folk come and visit us? Why can't our black folk come and visit us? They do everything else. They go everywhere else. Why can't they come and see us? I'm just challenging you that maybe now is the time that we put our nickels and dimes and dollars and and whatever together and go to a place. Do you know that on the continent of Africa, every airport is an international airport? That every plane is filled to the brim with people going? So what you may see on television may not actually be the Africa that you find. What you see on television may not be that the Central America that you find. Not everybody is on drugs. Not everybody is po- in, impoverished. There's something that you need to know, and that's a decision. That's why you are here, because you're going to be making the policy and the decisions. Leadership is a decision, and you have to make it. Leadership is an obligation, and you need to step up. What did Jesus say to those disciples? He says, what do you have? What do you get? What do you have? He says, we only have, we only have five loaves, two fish. He said, failure is not an option. Bring me what you got. My friends, the day of making excuses is over. The day of making excuses for what somebody else is not doing for you is over. The decisions that we have to make is an obligation. I am obligated to help you, and you are obligated to help me because you are going to be the only ones I can depend on. I'm going to get old and decrepit, and I'm going to depend upon you. You're going to be in hospitals, being nurses and doctors. I'm going to depend on you. You may be a politician somewhere. I'm going to depend on you. You may be a person who's an entrepreneur and I may need a job. I'm going to depend on you. What business do you have in your mind that you need to put into place? What desire in your mind and your heart that you need to put into place? We go every year to Africa, and I've been to several places. Just recently, we were in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, and we were brought to understanding of a program called the ZOE program, Z-O-E, where young people, young people, 18, 19, 20 years of age, have been taught to have a profession and to start their own business and to set aside where they can begin to depend upon themselves to be self-determining. Leadership is an obligation. And I need for you to live into that obligation. You must step up. I need for you to step up. So therefore, in your classes where you are studying, you just cannot decide to zone out for the day. You cannot decide that you don't want to be there because you got other places to go and other people to see. 
I need for you to open up your mind and to receive the knowledge that you need in order that you may be the person that you need to be and to become the entrepreneur that we need for you to be. Today is the time for you to step up. But leadership is not just making a decision. Leadership is not just the obligations that you need to step into, but leadership is hard work, and you've got to get tough. That means that you've got to say no to some things and yes to some things. You know, every time I think about life, I think I've been sized up, sorted, weighed, measured, compared, and contrasted. I used to grow up, my, my brother used to call me when I was, because I was real slender, but 6'4", and, and like 150 pounds, he used to call me a broomstick with teeth. And now that I've gotten older and lost my hair and gotten a little barrel around my, my, around my stomach, he calls me a barrel with no hair. But if I'm going to be compared, then let me choose how I'm going to be compared. If I'm going to be sized up, let me choose how I will be sized and sorted. If I'm going to be looked at, then let me allow myself to be placed in a way in which I want to be seen and experienced by others. So, what should I do? There always will be people who will say, I'm not strong enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not slender enough, I'm not smart enough. But let me tell you, it's not what people think of you is what you think of yourself. If you tell yourself that you're not strong enough, you never will be strong. If you tell yourself you're not smart enough, you will never find the intelligence to do anything. Just think about it from a biblical standpoint. Moses, who was a leader of his people out of Egypt, who we said led his people out of the bonds of, each, uh, uh, bonds of uh, slavery, stammered. He had a stammering problem. And yet he was able to lead his people. David, a shepherd boy, had a vision problem. And yet God used him in a significant way. The question is, not your limitations, but what would be the places that you would dream big enough for you to go? Leadership is tough. And you got to be strong in the midst of it. What are you going to be willing to do when you're discouraged to encourage yourself? That is one of the most important things that I have found. In my profession, there are some times where people look at me and they don't believe I have all that I need to do what I need to do. But I know what I need to do. What I have to do is I have to be true to who I am and to understand what God has placed within me and then to use what I have and then to place around me people who can do the things I cannot do. You see, intelligence is not you doing everything. Intelligence is being sure you have people around you who could do the things that you cannot do. Look at any team. The quarterback may have the ball in his hands, but he can't do it all by himself. Just think about it. If you have a basketball, you may be able to score, but you have to sometimes pass the ball to somebody else. And that is the same thing about life. You've got to put people around you that will help you be the person that you need to be. It is often said that if you want to see successful people, look at the five people around them. And then you would know why they are successful. If you look at someone who is not successful, look at the five people around them and see why. If, are you surrounding yourself with people who are feeding you that you may become the best that you can be? 
Are you around people who sought the very life out of you? Who does not make you who you ought to be? Leadership is tough. And you've got to make some decisions about it. But let me tell you this finally as I prepare to take my seat. I'm appreciative of President Staggers and this, this opportunity that you've given to me. I'm grateful for, for our dean of students and for the opportunity that you've given to me. I, don't, I do not get these kinds of opportunities often to just speak to young people. So I just say it like this. When I took my first trip abroad, they didn't want me to go. Who is they? The folk who've never been. Those are the they. They are the people who always tell you that you ought to stay where you are. Those are the they. I would have never gotten on a plane to go and travel because they said that it's too far to go. They said. If I always depended upon what they said, I would never have been anywhere. Because they don't ever go anywhere. They always stay where they are. And then one day you wake up and then they send you some Snapchats or some pictures from where they have gone. And you thought they were still down the street. But while they had you paralyzed where you were, they got up and left you and went to where they wanted to be. And then when they got back, this is what they say. You ought to go one day. So I never would have gone if I depended on what they said. So I depended on what God said in my spirit. And he said, go. Go to the places where you think that you may not want to go. Go. Go to the places where you may learn something about yourself. Go. Go. Go and be in a place like Harare, Zimbabwe, where the cab driver who's never been to school speaks five languages. Go. Go to, go to uh, uh, Tegucigalpa in, in Honduras and speak to people who have started businesses, and yet all they want to do is to be able to say to you, I'm glad you're here. Go. Go to Kenya. Go. Go to Switzerland. Go. Go to Germany. Go. Pick yourself up and go, because if you depend upon what they say, you never move from where you are. They won't take you anywhere. But only with what's inside of you will you be able to do all that you can. We live in a world that's uncertain right now. Where people will, will have all kinds of things on their minds. I just want to simply say to you today. If you want to make a witness in a world that is still dealing with racism and sexism and all kinds of isms, the only people who are going to make a difference will be you. If you depend upon somebody else to do for you what you can do for yourself, you'll always be where you are. So here at Morris College today, I want to say simply to you this prayer. I asked for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn to be humble. I asked for health that I might be great, do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might be the greater thing. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have praise, but I was given weakness that I might feel the need for God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for, but everything that I had hoped for, I received. All I want to simply say to you today is that I'm leaving to go to Zimbabwe January the 29th. 
I'm leaving to go to Rome. March the 29th. I'm leaving to go to Honduras. June 20th. And I don't know where I'm going to do the rest of the year. I may just pick up and go to Australia. I don't know. But you know what? I will never let somebody else tell me what to do. I will begin to see that that which is in me is capable enough to do more than I ever thought I was uh, able to do. All because I realize in my life, failure is never an option. I saw these AKAs over here. My daughter's an AKA. I'm a member of the only first fraternity in the world. Alpha Phi Alpha Incorporated. <laughs> I enjoy all our Panhellenic brothers and sisters. But I want to tell you this. Regardless of whatever organization I belong to, if it wasn't for God in the midst of my life, and for our, our God given our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we may have life and have it abundantly, we would never be able to be in the places in which we be. So today, as I said before, I'm depending on you to get all the knowledge you can get. I'm depending upon you to use your entrepreneurial skill set that you've yet to even put into place. I'm depending upon you to use all of your intellect because friends, Students, faculty, visitors, failure is not an option. Thank you and God bless. Mm, that was mighty powerful. Students, I certainly hope that you've listened, that you've heard, and that you will now heed because that was some powerful insight and wisdom. And I hope you'll take it and leave here with it and apply it. Powerful. Fear and failure, not an option. At this time, we're gonna call on our esteemed president, Dr. Leroy Staggers, for final remarks. And following him, Reverend Dr. Charles P. will come with the benediction. Good morning, Morris College family. First of all, I want um, each and every one of you to um, rest on your feet. Everybody stand up. And I want you to give the bishop, Bishop Holston, a rounding applause of appreciation. Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. That's the Morris College love. Appropriately expressing our deep appreciation to Bishop Holston for coming to us this morning. A very powerful voice. Uh, a great day at Morris College that we have you to come to speak to our students with that wonderful message. Failure is not an option. And uh, we hope that, as our dean indicated, that you took that to heart and will let that guide you for the rest of your days on earth. So thank you, Bishop. Uh, we appreciate you coming this morning. And I also want to thank uh, Elder Williams for helping us to work out uh, the process of getting Bishop Holston here this morning. 
We appreciate you deeply. Uh, we also want to show our appreciation to uh, First Lady Holston. Would you stand up? First Lady. <laughs> We appreciate you coming also. Uh, would you join me, please, uh, Bishop Holston, for we have a appreciation here for you or that you could take. And hopefully you will be reminded and remember your day here at Morris College. Um, a clock, a nice clock, which we hope you would put someplace that you can see it frequently. It says, uh, in appreciation to Bishop Jonathan Holston, for outstanding contributions as keynote speaker for the President's Lecture Series, Morris College, Central South Carolina, October 24, 2019. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's ask our uh, United Me uh, Methodist pastors, would you all please stand and thank you for coming to all the United Methodist pastors. Thank you all for coming and being a part of us uh, this morning. Um, <clears throat> I know um, I want Dr. Patricia Ali to just stand briefly, um, say something about her. Now, um, you've heard um, <clears throat> Bishop is a world traveler and talking about the importance of how traveling abroad can uh, broaden your horizon, uh, revolutionize your thinking, uh, and have an impact, uh, happy to rethink who you actually are. Now, Dr. Ali has been, Patricia Ali has been for the past probably uh, seven or eight years or so, been spearheading and leading our study abroad program and uh, she currently have been to several continents countries around the world <clears throat> Europe Africa uh, Asia um, but also she has planned um, uh, with the college a, a trip to Berlin uh, what are the dates again in February The month of spring, uh, the week of spring break. So during spring break, 7th through the 13th of March. So we want you to um, get to her. And, um, you know, <clears throat> there are, you can work out the funding. Uh, it takes about $3,500, I believe. But uh, I think you can work with it through financial aid, financial aid program. And there's some other assistance also. But we do want you to have that experience, uh, as many of our students, and of course it's open to faculty, it's open to alumni, uh, and friends of Morris College. So you're welcome to go on that trip, but we love our students, as many of our students. And I can tell you, all of the students who've gone on in the past, it's been a life-altering experience for them. They see the entire world differently come back and begin to even study. Um, this thing about uh, what he said, when preparation meets purpose, uh, it's a very powerful thing uh, for your life. And we want you to be prepared, as Bishop Holston says, when you leave Morris College, that uh, you're ready for the world and can do some wonderful things. Um, you, you can make a difference every single day student on the campus. So I uh, have those experiences as well as do well, your, well with your classes. So thank you again, uh, Bishop. Now uh, I'm going to transition here for the last couple of minutes that we have. Um, <clears throat> I want um, to bring up uh, Mr. James Felder, uh, our great late president, Dr. Lund C. Richardson, who was president of this institution for 43 years, uh, transitioned um, about a year, a little over a year or so ago. And um, <clears throat> we were so pleased that, you know, I want you to know that for many, many years, Dr. Richardson was talking about um, writing his life story. And um, <clears throat> at the end of his career, toward the end, he did not get an opportunity to do that, to write his um, autobiography. But he did, and there is a biographer 
uh, somebody did write the story of our late president. And uh, we also, we wanted Morris College family to have the opportunity, you have the opportunity, faculty, staff, students, and alumni, to have the opportunity to um, know, first of all, that the uh, book is there, the biography, and also to have an opportunity to purchase today or at some subsequent point, and or to have the author autograph it for you if you so desire to have a copy of that. So we've invited um, the biographer, Mr. James Felder, who's also written a few other books. Uh, some of them I have read. But I want to ask him to come up for a few minutes to just to tell you briefly uh, about it and that the opportunity is there. He's set up outside after the program is over. So we're going to give him a few minutes to talk about the book and then uh, we'll close. Good morning. Thank you, Bishop Holston, for a profound lecture on leadership this morning. I got a lot out of it at my age. <laughs> Dr. Richardson left us last year, a man who spent all of his life in education, a man who served in, at the college level for 62 years, high school level for three years, and he didn't want to do his life story, but it prevailed upon him, and he relented, and I was able to spend 40 hours with him, extracting all I could out of him. I want to thank Dr. Staggers for his support in that effort. Uh, not only did he write a forward in the book, but he also provided personal financial assistance also so we could get it through. The book is about a man who saved this institution which was about to go out of business in 1974. Dr. Ali was here, and he knows what it was like at that time. Uh, he's a man who never applied for a job. Every job he served in, they sought him. They came after him. Uh, it's about a man who served a church for 56 years, Thankful Baptist Church in Bamberg, South Carolina. He went over to the church to spend three months while they could find a new pastor. Three months ended, no pastor. He stayed another three months. Finally, the deacon said, why don't you just stay on here with us? And he stayed for 56 years. A remarkable man, principal, president, vice president, dean, but his mark was left here at Morris College. The book is available, all of that is covered there, but let's, let me share one little story with you. In, 20, in 2000, Bishop, the Leg South Carolina legislature passed the lottery bill. Senator Robert Ford of Charleston had a proviso slipped into the legislation that provided some of the profits to HBCUs. But the Baptists in South Carolina, black and white, fought the lottery. They fought it tooth and nail. They said, we don't need a lottery. So when the first check arrived at Mars College, Dr. Richardson called a special board meeting. And he said, well, we have this check here from the lottery. What shall we do with it? There was silence in the room. So finally he said, let's just bless this money and spend it. <laughs> The lottery struck again at Morris College when the Reverend Jackson hit the big Powerball and gave $10 million to Morris College. And Dr. Richardson took that $10 million, which was supposed to build an administration building. And he squeezed out of it not only an administration building, but two dormitories, upgraded some other facilities. And so, his life needs to be preserved. So that's what this book is all about. I'll be out front uh, autographing it, as Dr. Stagger said. And one other thing, Elder Williams and his brother Frank are leading an effort to raise funds to erect a statue on this campus of Dr. Richardson. Thank you so much.
Okay, we've got a change with the benediction. We're going to have uh, Reverend Stewart with Emmanuel United Methodist Church come for the closing benediction. Before he comes, let me ask you, Miss um, uh, Mac, are we still having the prayer vigil? Okay, just for a few minutes, right in front of the science building, the ladies of Mars will be having a prayer vigil, just about five minutes, for those who have or are dealing with breast cancer or domestic violence. So we ask the entire Mars College family to please come and join us over in front of the w Wilson Booker Science Building. Thank you. Will you please stand as you're able? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us, hence now and forevermore. Amen, amen, grace and peace be unto you. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, can we have your attention just for a minute, please? We're asking, ladies, can we have just a minute, just a minute. All United Methodist pastors that are here today, preachers, associates, whatever, we ask you all to come up front so we can take a picture with Bishop Holston. All of you. All United Methodist pastors in the building, come up front.
Yeah, it'd be nice to go. Thank you. 